Hello, I'm the fortunate and lucky owner of a Philips CM8833 CRT monitor, which you can see behind me. And being in the UK, this has a SCART connector on the back, which is perfect for use with my Amiga or the Mister or many other consoles. And its picture quality is absolutely amazing considering its age. But sadly, it has now fallen foul of a failing power switch. And it's a common fault. The power switch no longer latches. But given it's such a common fault, replacements are easy to find. So in this video, we're going to look at replacing this switch and we're also going to have a look inside to see what failed. Now you see I have this face down on the desk. It's sitting on a towel doubled over to protect the screen. First, I need to unclip the cable from the guide at the bottom and then remove the two screws there, followed by the two screws at the top of the case. Now it's worth noting at this point that CRTs can store a really high voltage even when powered off and disconnected, so care must be taken. And once unscrewed, don't just pull the lid off because the speakers are connected to the main board. So we'll need to disconnect them. And inside? What a beauty. They don't make them like this anymore. This area on the right hand side we want to keep away from, because this is where any high voltages might be present. If concerned, we can discharge this safely, but the area I need to work on is on the opposite side, so we'll be well away from this area. Now, standing the monitor the right way around, the power section is located here. The switch is tucked under the screen at the front. And whilst it looks really complex, it's actually really easy to get to. First, I'm going to unplug this wire that goes to the rest of the monitor. And then, the power module simply slides out. Once removed, and to make things a little easier, I'm going to unclip this connector. This goes to the degauss wires running around the outside of the screen. Taking a closer look at the switch, I'll cut off the cable tie, and take a closer look at the connections. You'll notice my replacement switch has an extra switch on it. This isn't needed for this monitor, so I can simply cut those off. Next, I'll unscrew the switch so we can get better access to its contacts. Remove the plastic switch and then desolder it. And with that removed, we can now solder the new one in. And once soldered, I'll screw it back in place. Next, we need to restore the cable tie. And once done, we can reattach the plastic button, making sure we get it the right way around. Next, we can reconnect the degauss wire and slide the power module back in, taking care to move the degauss wires away from the electronics inside. Finally, we reconnect the power to the rest of the monitor and screw the case together. And as you can see, sorry about the flicker, the monitor is now once again staying on with the power switch. Great! So let's have a look at that old switch and see what went wrong with it. I'm going to be quite destructive with this as we won't use it again, but let's open it up and find out why the latching mechanism has stopped working. Did you see those bits fly everywhere? Now you can see the main switch arm, but if you actually look a little bit closer, Underneath it, there's this little bit of plastic that can slide up and down. And it's supposed to have a little plastic post on it that slides along the grooves here. I guess it's snapped off or worn away. Well, a quick video and an easy fix. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.